Hello and welcome back to the NFL DFS Slate Breakdown for Monday Night Football. We got the Seahawks versus the New York Giants. Should be a fun game. I'm actually very excited about this uh, slate. I think there's a lot of interesting ways we can attack it. And hopefully one of us wins big. All right, now what we're going to go through today is we're going to go through some projected ownership for the players and then a little position by position breakdown to try and figure out where we can attack the slate. Without further ado, let's get into it. But before we do, come join us at LionStar. $39.99 a month gets you access to all of the stuff we do for all the sports we cover, all of the DFS tools, the Props AI tool. You get it all, one low price. Come join us. Come get involved. Let's have a day. Now let's get into the fun. Getting over to the slate, and I think this is an interesting slate. You know, it is in New York. We have a game total of 47. I think there's a lot of different ways we can go uh, with this slate, and it's going to be an interesting one. So, as always, let's check over to uh, some ownership and Seattle at New York on DraftKings. So as always, two quarterbacks are the highest owned. Uh, I do expect that Jones uh, is fairly high owned and probably pretty high owned at the MVP spot. Um, But we get over to the position players. One of the things we've really been seeing a lot so far this year is one team really standing out ownership wise where more people are going to that team than the other it's not so much the case here two highest owned guys are seattle wide receivers lockett and metcalf but then we have waller burita slayton all um you know the next three spots followed by a couple more seattle guys so there is a little bit lean to the seattle position players than the New York position players. However, I do expect a little more lean at the quarterback spot to be towards Jones than Geno Smith, just because of his rushing upside. So I don't think there's a ton we can gain here from ownership itself. I do want to come back and and touch on ownership at the end after we go through some uh, matchup situations. And also, we should probably flip over to ownership on FanDuel real quick to go over that as well. Obviously, it is set up a little bit different on FanDuel. One less player spot and then the 1.5 MVP spot is uh, the same pricing. So you're just picking a captain, which is wild to me. And uh, on FanDuel, it is a similar situation. Slayton does get up into that top ownership tier with uh the positional spot but Lockett is right there you know and the same guy as Waller Burita both of them are there so let's go through this the slate we'll come back and check back on to uh the ownership at the end I just want to head over to the matchups tool first and we can go a little more position by position with that now We know both quarterbacks are going to be very high owned and both of them are in very, very good spots so far. uh, The Giants have been giving it up to the quarterback and the Seahawks have been given up to the quarterback. I mean, Andy Dalton just went nuts on the Seahawks. The Seahawks are extremely beat up on the secondary. I think attacking that is very interesting. I've actually already bet the Daniel Jones over. I bet, uh, Darius Slayton, they did a ladder with his, uh, his receiving yards. So I'm high on this Giants passing game today, but you can't sleep on the Seahawk passing D. Purdy lit him up. Josh Dobbs lit him up and Geno Smith absolutely can as well. I think both guys are in play And you can use them, you know, according to the rest of the lineup and the other guys you want to target. Obviously, Geno is a little better to stack with 
just because, you know, he doesn't have the huge rushing upside. Yeah, he might add a point or two with rushing, but he's not going to add, you know, five, six, eight points like Daniel Jones could. Um, so all in all, I do like Daniel Jones more if you wanted to use one of them as a captain. I'm not high on Geno Smith as a captain because he will, uh, the way he gets there and the way he is optimal, it's by feeding his receivers. So with that being said, let's move off to the running back spot. All right. Running backs, running backs are interesting. Uh, Saquon Barkley is doubtful. I don't expect him to go. Uh, so it puts us in the category where we got Burita, who only had four carries, did have a touchdown, had three receptions, um, you know, seven touches as the starter in a game that they were down a ton, had to throw. I don't really love that reception number. I don't love the carry number. Uh, and as we saw, he is one of the higher owned players. I don't love going to Burita. Now, I think Burita is in an okay spot. Uh, Sanders did okay, but that's because he got a touchdown on a bunch of receptions. Gibbs did nothing. Akers did nothing, but Akers was splitting. Kyron Williams actually did do very well. Um, as you can see right here as the RB2. Um, but every week versus the Seahawk team, one of the running backs have been decent. Now we also have Brightwell. Brightwell had four carries, also had three targets. So very similar workload as Burita, but going much lower owned. And I kind of tend to like Brightwell a little more than I do like Burita in this matchup, just based on ownership. I think the projection for Burita is higher and he's probably going to be higher across the board, but that's really just because he likely has a little bit better chance of, you know, a home run play. Uh, but I don't love the Burita play, not at the ownership. I think Brightwell is, is interesting and at much lower ownership. Now, for Seattle side, one thing we have to talk about, Charbonnet had 45% of the work or of the snaps last week. This very well could be the case going forward where he's in that 40, 45% chance or snap percentage spot. And if that's the case, and he's going low owned. He is in a great spot to get some leverage on the field. So I definitely like uh, Sharbs a, a bit today with him going low owned versus poor Rushdie. So I think he's very interesting. Gainwell is obviously the top running back in this uh, class of running backs in this game. He went nuts last week. People are going to follow that, but understand that he was on less snap share that he's had. You know, the rookie in Charbonnet has now played three NFL games, and that snap count keeps going up. While I don't think he's going to overtake Walker unless there's an injury, uh, it does just, you know, bring some worries to the overall upside of Walker. He very, very well uh, may have just had the best game of his season. He is in a good spot, though. He is going to be getting most of the goal line work, and he is getting most of the carry. So Walker is absolutely in play, and I do like him. Now, if we go to the wide receiver room, this is the spot where I think it's really, really interesting. Uh, the Giants, you know, we only have three guys listed here, but they really have five guys uh, involved in their wide receiver core. You got Hyatt. And Wandell Robinson, um, who are not on this list, and both played, you know, 22 to 35 percent of the snaps uh, last week. Wandell Robinson, and only 22 percent of the snaps had five targets. So Jones likes him and was looking to him. So we do have to remember that when we're trying to pick um, our receivers for this game. Those guys are absolutely in play because they also can make a big play happen. I love the target volume that uh, Robinson showed last game. Not saying that that's going to be the same this game, but it's an interesting note. 
Now, as far as the receivers that we know are going to be on the field a little bit more, Darius Slayton for the Giants has a 95% uh, route participation rate, meaning he's almost running every single route for this team. And I think he is in an excellent spot to really crush this uh, Seahawks secondary. He is the guy that, you know, has a a pretty good a dot at 14 yards he can get deep he can do a lot of different things and i really like him in this matchup he is definitely a guy that can you know three reception for 95 and a touchdown he is this guy that can really put up some serious yards on only a few uh care uh catches so i really do like him versus a beat up secondary uh paris campbell you know, he is such an enigma to me as far as he's playing a lot, but he's just never that great. You know, he's got four targets week one, six targets week two, six targets week three, but 24 yards is the most he's come from it. I can't wait till the Giants push him aside and let Wandale or Hyatt take his role because he just doesn't put up the numbers that we need now with that being said he is going to be low owned he's on the field a lot and he can absolutely get you catch a touchdown now he doesn't do it very often but he does have that ability he can do it he just has a low a dot and he's going to need a lot of things to fall in his way to be optimal and hodgins Hodgins, uh, with the emergence of Wandell Robinson last week, he took a big hit on targets. He was only targeted once. The two other games, three and five. Now he is the third guy, um, and he's going to be on the field a lot, but I think his position is the most flexible at this point. It seems like they may not be all in on Hodgins, and so Hyatt... Or Robinson could take his role. Um, I do think that Campbell is the worst of them all, but uh, you know, they all three of these guys being Slayton, Campbell, and Hodgins are on the field the most. And Hodgins likely has low ownership, but he has some ability, and he had a real nice run to end the season last year. But he's starting off pretty ugly and uh, hard to trust him too much. On the Seattle side, you got the big three in uh, Smith, Nick Jigba, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are both in very, very good spots. Uh, it shows that the WR2 hasn't done much versus this. Uh, this defense yet the one thing with that i will have to say is the dvoa for tyler lockett is 32nd so he is going against a you know adjusted defensive rating that is the worst in the league i think lockett is in a really good spot and i do like him we know dk metcalf is going to get the targets eight targets six targets five targets they will always be there. And he is the one that is most likely to have a chance at the 12, 14, 15 target game as he is just an absolute candy fueled beast. Um, and he's absolutely in consideration in this game. All of these passing weapons are, I think both defenses are very acceptable to the pass. So I like all of them. And I think we really need to lean on some of that lower ownership today at the wide receiver position due to that. Now you go to tight end. Darren Waller is in an absolute smash bot. Seattle has been terrible at defending the tight end for years and years and years. And once again, it appears they are as they are, I think, 30th in DVOA versus the tight end. So Waller's in a smash spot. Uh, Giants also have struggled in the past at protecting the tight end and it has shown a little bit this year uh ferguson you know he didn't put up numbers but he got seven targets so they were using him and wanted to go to him Ertz eight targets six for 56 kittle seven for 90 
there are numbers going against this Giants team. Now, the issue at tight end for the Seahawks is they got a lot of guys, a lot of tight ends that they can throw out there. While Fant is the most likely, he's not necessarily the only. And I would definitely consider the ancillary tight ends for the Seahawks this week. Now, let's get back over to ownership here and dissect that a little bit more now that we've gone over the slate and the players themselves. Uh, obviously, Jones and Smith, we like both of them as quarterbacks. Uh, Seattle receiver is going super high owned. I think you likely do need one of them though. So you may have to bite some ownership there and just go with it. But then on the New York side is where we can really play with the ownership. So we got Waller, uh, Slayton's higher owned, Burita's higher owned. And we can, I think there's guys we can get down here. Wandell Robinson, Fairly cheap, only 14% owned, had five targets last week in a decent matchup. I think he makes some sense. Charbonnet, we talked about getting some work. He makes some sense. Brightwell, another low-owned guy that makes sense. Uh, Colby Parkinson is one of the tight ends for Seattle that I was talking about that we could try to use. Look, two targets uh, week one. Three targets week two, four targets week three. He is getting work at the tight end two spot and going unowned. If he gets a touchdown there, you know, he's likely in the optimal. And I would say, I mean, tight ends obviously have very high likelihood of catching touchdown passes once you get close to the goal line. So you have to like him. Jalen Hyatt, we talked about a little bit. He has the ability to, you know, break games. The one thing I will say with him is that while his snap route gained, you know, the first and second week, it didn't go up the third week and Wondell Robinson was there. So I do worry about his role. It may not grow and he might have to do a lot with a little to make it happen. But there is pass. He's an electric player. Noah Fant, you know, he's there as well. And then if you want to get really crazy, the wide receiver for Jake Bobo um, caught a touchdown, but he's only had three targets on the year, so it is not <laughs> a high-confidence play. Uh, all in all, oh, wow, Hodgins is getting no love whatsoever. See, this is a spot where I think it is interesting. If he's getting no love at all, he's still on the field you know, 60 to 70%, uh, he could very easily have a game where those targets come back. He gets 40, four receptions, 40 yards and a touchdown and boom, he's optimal at, you know, extremely low ownership. So I think there is definite pass and swings we can take on this slate to get a little different and still have a fairly high projected lineup um, averse the defense's weaknesses. So I think the slate is really fun and really interesting to kind of digest. Typically what we see, the highest owned captain guys are all from this top four or five uh, pieces here. Daniel Jones is likely going to be the highest owned captain because of his rushing ability and he can throw the ball. Metcalf, I would say, is probably next. Geno might be down a little bit. But Metcalf, Lockett, both make a lot of sense. Waller makes a ton of sense. Waller easily could have a 6 for 80 and 2 touchdown game in this matchup. So I think there's a lot of different ways we can attack this slate. And it's one that I'm pretty excited about. So I hope you guys found this informative. And I will be back on Thursday to break down the Thursday uh, showdown as well. Hope you all have a good one. Remember to try and get a little different in this slate. And I hope somebody can win a milli here. Good luck, guys. Bye.